we are going to work with an occurrence algorithm. To be more specific, we are going to practice the string occurrence algorithm by writing a JavaScript function that will take a string argument at invocation time and return the first most frequently occurring character within that particular string. Reading the string from left to right. For example, the word Google has two G's and two O's. But since the character G occurs before the O's, we need to return the G. And since we developers have limited control over how the end user will type, we need to handle edge cases and corner cases. For example, making the input string case insensitive. We will also have basic error handling. Let's think about our function. Since we are searching for characters within a string, let's require a single string parameter, and we'll call it input str. The str, in this case, is to denote the data type, which obviously would be a string data type. Now let's think about the steps or the algorithm that we are going to take in order to get the desired result from our function. So here's the basic outline. First, we'll create a basic error handler. Then we are going to set up some initializers to transform the input string to handle those edge and corner cases and to loop through the string. And obviously, we are going to loop through the string after we've uh, transformed the input string through the initializers. And then finally, we will return the most frequently occurring character from our input string. In terms of error handling, we can certainly be very in-depth. However, if you're practicing this in the context of a coding test, in which case you will have time limitations. So it's best just to handle basic error checking at this time to demonstrate to the test proctor that you're thinking about it. So in that vein, we will throw an error if the function is invoked with anything other than a string data type. Let's handle those edge and corner cases by first lower casing whatever text the end user types in so that we can have consistency within our string to make it easier to work with. And then we are going to use a regex pattern to remove any character that is not an alpha character within the ASCII character set. I'm going to call this constant sanitize input string. Which will take the input string, lowercase it, Now we're going to run this regex pattern. Now this regex pattern is the exact same as this regex pattern here. Okay. But I think this pattern, the, the, the one with the W, 
uppercase W is a little bit less verbose. And the reason why there's an underscore there is because I want to remove the underscore as well within our string parameter. We are going to need another constant and two more variables. The next constant I will call sanitize string array. And I'm making these names very uh, verbose and very descriptive because this is, after all, an instructional video in the real life. You don't have to be this explicit. So what we're going to do here is we are going to convert the sanitize input string into an array so that we can loop through it down here. And we're going to split the string with no space in between the quotation marks so that we can split up each individual characters within the string. Uh, since there is no char, there's no character data type in the JavaScript, it's only a string data type. So therefore, we have to split up the individual character within the string by calling split, which will convert the string into an array. So max num is the number, the maximum number of occurrences of the common character within the string. So most freak char stands for most frequently occurring characters, which would be a string data type. And then this most freak char here is what we will ultimately return down here because the desired outcome of this function is to return the most frequently occurring character within the string, right? So let's go ahead and get rid of that low hanging fruit now and we'll work on the loop. Now that we have an array containing all of the alpha characters from the user inputted string, we can use a number of native looping mechanisms that JavaScript provides for us. I'm going to select the for each loop higher order function, which does incur some compiler level overhead and isn't as performant as a pure for loop, but it's easier to read and require less code. So inside of the for each loop, we are going to capture the length of each character. Okay, so keep in mind that we have an array here containing each character, right? So we're going to loop through each of these characters, then get the length of each occurring character within that array, and then we are going to run a check, and then reassign the value of these two variables that we declare up here. That's why we declared these variables with let, instead of using a constant, because we are going to reassign these two let variables. We can capture the length of each character, each char, inside of the sanitized string array by taking the sanitized input string that we process up here, splitting it against each character inside of the array and capturing its length. So I'm going to declare an immutable constant called char length. And once again, I'm going to take the sanitized input string, split it against the character, each character that we're looping through inside of this array, and capturing the length. So the check that we will be performing inside of this for each loop is we, we are going to ask if the char length, which is to say 
the number of character inside of this array, if the length of each of those character is greater than max num, which is the let variables that we declare up here, which initially is set at zero. So if the character length is greater than max num, then we are going to continually assign max num and most frequently occurring character to be the greatest, the maximum value. That's why we declare these two variables as let mutable variables up here on line eight and nine. So now we're going to reassign its value inside of this if check inside of the loop. So once again, we're checking if the number, if the amount of characters inside this array or its length is greater than the max number, which initially is set at zero. Okay, if that's greater, then we continually assign to whatever is the greatest, has the greatest length inside of the sanitized string array. And then we're going to, we're going to return um, the that character, which is the most the most free char. Okay, so now let's test our function. Let's pass in the word Google with a capital G. Save it. As you can see here in the Dev Console, we get the letter G back as the uh, the, the most frequently occurring character within that string. Let's try moo boo. Okay, we got the O back, obviously. How about M M M? Okay. Now let's try to intentionally pass in the wrong data type. Okay, uncut most invoke with string data type, which is storing this error up here. Let's try a number one, 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 two, two. Same thing. But what if we were to pass in number as a string? It'll return to one, right? Because we are, because the JavaScript compiler, if you're passing a number inside of single quotes or double quote, it will automatically convert that to a string data type. You can see there. Okay. Now let's take a look at our time and space complexity for this function. So here, this is constant. These two functions, two lowercase and two uh, replace are both linear, O of n. I will consider this the split method as linear as well, so we're still at O of n. Um, and then there are no nested loops here at all. It just, we just have one singular loop. Okay, so this is O of n as well. So our time complexity is linear, O of n. In terms of space complexity, uh, the size obviously will increase with the length of the string, right? So we're looking at at uh, O of n run, uh, space complexity as well. So linear runtime, linear space complexity. As an aside, for those of you that are brand new to um, JavaScript or brand new to development, how, how I'm able to do a live reload with this is I'm using something called live server. And you can install this via NPM. And if you right click on your HTML file, index.html file, and you go open live server, okay, and then whenever you, it essentially gives you a web server to work with, a lot with live reload. And whenever you make changes to here and save, it will uh, refresh the browser automatically for you. And then of course you can right click and stop it as well. In closing, I want to say that there are multiple ways to approach this algorithm. Certainly, you do not need to handle um, corner and edge cases or even basic error handling. 
you can just uh, brute force it with a for each loop. Obviously, you're going to have to uh, declare a couple of mutable variables outside of the loop. And then just go ahead and return uh, the most frequently occurring character if you want a quick and brute force approach. But if you're taking this and you're trying to learn algorithms and you're taking this in the context of a coding interview, you probably uh, will have to make some sort of attempt to handle uh, edge and corner cases and basic error handling. If you like this type of video, please consider subscribing.